know, with a smile on my face going to school. You know, not having the best clothes, but still going to school with a smile on my face, enjoying life, overcoming different adversities, having to walk to school in the rain, ride the bus four and five hours, you know, walk here, walk to the grocery store, push the grocery carts home with your brother and your sister sitting inside the car. That's tough. You know, and that was our way of life. So our way of life was overcoming adversity, pushing through obstacles. So I took that and I turned it the right way to go to college, you know, study. Nice idea. Philip, thank you for taking time out of the day and talking to us today. Appreciate it. Back in your old stomping ground. Um, let's talk a little bit about your background. Dallas native playing for hometown team. Talk about that. Before we got to the Cowboys, what made up Philip Tanner? How did you get there? Uh, it was a journey. Something I really need to write a book about one day. They actually started off with Pee Wee Ball for the Oakland Cowboys. You know, with that Dane Del Park was a total accident even playing ball. I was just going to see a friend play and he ended up at the wrong park. You know, and the coach was like, Oh, have you ever played? I was like, Nah, you know, if I can't find able to play. So he's like, Well, you look like you can play, you know, come out and play. Coach named Mike Phillips for the Oakland Cowboys, so he brought me out. For a lot of people, that is their goal growing up. My goal is to make it to the NFL. My goal is to be A, B, C, D. That was not for you. No, it wasn't. You know, coming from inner city Dallas is what our goals. You know, I mean, sad but true. You know, growing up in this area, you don't have goals. You know, your goals is maybe to graduate from high school, maybe. You know, that's probably one of your only goals. And after that, like, college is unheard of. You know, it's getting better now. I went around to high schools and kids talked about going to college. But when I was here, I, I had no clue. I had no clue. If I didn't play football, I had no clue what I would have done after high school. Take us to college. Did oh. you imagine you were going to be there? Did you imagine it was going to take you to the league? I mean, take us up to this point. Uh, high, school, high school football was fun. Like, I just wanted to have fun with boys. It was to the point where my freshman year, they moved me up on JV. And for the championship game, for the freshman championship, I was like, no, there's no way I'm not going to play with my guy that I grew up with. So the JV players were mad at me because I went back down to freshman and played with those guys. College was not on my mind until, like I said, the end of my junior year when I started becoming recruited. And even then, I was like, man, I'm not coming to South Bay. My boys, you know, I'm not coming to your school unless my boy can come. So that's how I was. But once I was recruited, I was like, I might as well take advantage of it. You know, I can get out of Dallas. You know, I can reinvent myself. So that's why I chose to go to Tennessee, you know, Middle Tennessee State. I was like, I want to get as far away as possible so that I can reinvent myself and grow. You know, because I feel that if I was here close to home in my own security blanket, I wouldn't grow. Wow. So that definitely was an eye-opening experience somewhere else, completely different. Probably gave you a lot of different experiences that you never thought. It was Tennessee's little country, so. Yeah. <laughs> definitely not Dallas, that's for sure. Right. I mean, it's a small town, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I rode the Greyhound, 16 hours drive. From you know downtown Dallas to I don't even know if you call it downtown or I don't even know, you know they have a downtown. But when I got off of a bus, I was just like, you know, where am I at? You know, where, where is this I'm at? You know, before I left, I told my mom I'm going on a four to five year vacation. You know, when I come back, everything should be alright. You know, did I know I would make it to the league? Athletes have come through here a lot. A lot of great football players have come to Kimball. A lot of guys that made, shouldn't have made it. Some guys that say shouldn't have made it, made this. And it's all about how bad you want to get it. You know, a lot of folks say it's all about pays all I feel that's just a slow down. A lot of folks don't embrace that. You know, sometimes because when people say hard work pays off, they feel, okay, cool. If I'm working hard for NFL and I'm working hard for NFL and I don't make NFL, I'm a failure. No, I'm mean, not. You know, that work ethic is contagious. Yeah. You know, I don't care if I'm working at McDonald's. If I don't have a work ethic, I'm not gonna make it. You know, when that line get long, long get that <laughs> up, If I don't have that work ethic in me to push through, I'm not gonna make it. You'll be discouraged. You know? Yeah. You know, so that's why I like to talk to uh, kids at Career Day. I let them know I was a kid at Career Day. When a doctor came in there, I tell my friend, "Hey, I'm." Doctor. Soon as police come in, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I'm gonna be the police. I know, the firefighter. You know what? I'll be the trash man. I really think I can do that. At that time, I didn't know what I wanted to be, but what I did know what I wanted to be something. 
You know, that's the most important thing to want to be something. Mm -hmm. You know, just to have a dream. I don't care what it is. Because you develop that. The same work ethic that I put toward being a football player, that lawyer put toward being a lawyer, you put toward being a journalist, you know, media, photographer, whatever it is, it's the same, same blueprint, the same guy. Yeah, fire and desire to keep pushing in the rough day. The National Football League came out a tough year. It was a lot going on. We had no idea when anything was going to start. Talk about that coming out that year. Man, the lockout. First of all, I was had to take a fifth year because I got hurt my original senior year, but everything happens for a reason. You know, I said my question guy, you know, why do I have to get hurt? Why do I have to sit out a year? But he had a plan for me. So my true, my redshirt senior year, it was a year to lock up. In an athlete's mind, I'm gonna hear my name. Bro. I'm gonna hear my name. Bro. So it was, was it Thursday night? Thursday night was the first, first round. I'm watching as if they were call my name. And they call my name. I ain't cool. They call my name tomorrow. They call my name. Friends give me going to church. I, I ain't going to church. I'm gonna stay home. They, I want to hear him call my name. They go through it, Mr. Irrelevant. Boom. They call my name. I sat in the room and I cried. I cried. Although everybody told me, oh, you're not gonna be drafted. You know, you're not about to draft for I felt I'm gonna get drafted. You know, so it hurt. So I sat and I cried and I was like, ah, what am I gonna do? You know, so after that, got this when it really just got up and down. Amazing call. She was like, well, yeah, they're not taking me down to draft experience right now because of the lockout. Would you like to go to the UFL? I was like, okay, now tell me the good, good to bad about this UFL. She like to play, play pretty well, you know, you still, I said, I just want to play football. You know, I want to play ball. So she's like, okay, cool. But the only thing about it is, if you go to the UFL, and then the lockout opens up, you're stuck in that contract. I was like, yeah, you're right. You know, you know? So I was like, okay, cool. I called her. I said, you know what? We'll go to the UFL. UFL had a draft. I was like, drafted like number 21 overall to, to, in Hartford, Connecticut. I was like, okay, cool. Just going to play ball. <laughs> So I get on the plane, fly up to Hartford. You know, so everything's going well, leading the coaches, going through offensive, defensive meetings. I'm excited for to play professional football, something I always wanted to do. We're gonna cancel the team. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I'm like, talk to me, guy. You know, am I not supposed to be playing football or what? So they say, yeah, we're gonna count the team, flying everybody back home, thank you. That's it, you know, we'll talk to you later, we're we'll counting the team, we're gonna fly So I'm sitting in the airport, and I put my headphones on, this is Kirk Franklin, the inner city Dallas kid. Kirk was church, you know. <laughs> Get up in the morning, turn on Kirk Franklin, that's the church, you know. So Kirk spoke to me, you know, he just told me, you know, everything is gone, all the hard times, everything is gone. Back to Dallas. When they get back to Tennessee, I flew back to Tennessee. I didn't even come to Dallas. I didn't even want to face that. You know, so I flew back to Tennessee. Sit in my apartment. So my agent called and said, Yeah, the lockout may be open, you know, Tuesday. They may open up Tuesday. Don't expect a call, but you know, they may get a call. You know, I'm not for sure. It's not looking too good. So I'm like, Okay. Less than 15 minutes later, you know, I got a call from Coach Skip the Cowboys. And Philip Town and Skip the Cowboys, would you like to be a part of our team? By me being from Dallas and sitting down some tour, he called me like, ah, oh, this is one of my homeboys playing or something. So I was like, seriously, he was like, yeah. He's like, I can't offer you any money, any signing bonus, anything. I said, Coach, all I need is an opportunity to make this team. That's all I need. I don't need a signing bonus, I don't need all this, I just need an opportunity to make this team. He said, okay. I hung the phone up, called my mom, called my teacher, said, hey, I'm gonna make this team. And indeed you did. So what's your memorable uh, event, game, or time here? Probably be again in his high school. It was it was a loss, but just building up to the game, like you know, like, nah, we're not coming no cliff. We're not gonna play because it was a pretty much all white country school. They're like, nah, we ain't gonna play. And 
they were like, well, if we do come, bring our own radio, our own security, everything. Hmm. They brought their own security, their own radio, their own cassette stand. That's probably the most packed game I ever played in. Yeah. They had like 195 yards. We lost, though, but it was a hell of a game. Yeah. What you think about this year's team? Uh, Cowboys are uh, uh, Campbell. Oh man, we're gonna be good, man. We uh we losing a couple of guys, a couple of key players. But other than that, man, they'll bounce back. Coach Nelson's a great coach, man. He works with the guys real well. So I mean just come out and play hard, that'll be alright. Hopefully we can go ahead and get us a state championship. Man. Yeah. Get the practice field back here. Many battles back here. A lot of memories back here, man. A lot of memories from from fist fights at practice, man, to, to everything. It, it's, it's where it started at. It's where it started. I came into camp. Four guys ahead of me. Boom, DeMarco Murray, he drafted me. Third round pick, he comes in. Boom, he's hurt. He can't practice. Boom, I'm already up. Got charged. First day of camp, the charge charge by now. Boom. I'm already up the depth chart. So in less than two days of camp, I moved two spots up the depth chart. I got to practice. So guess what? I shine. You know, at every rep I got, I made sure I went 100%. Every night I stayed my play. Every night, every note that the coach said, I took it down. But I felt me saying it is important. You know, so I wrote down every note. I said, I'm going to make this team. Sleep wasn't. I wasn't trying to sleep. I can sleep when I'm done once I make this team. It went on, went on, preseason games. Went playing football. I was like, man, I can do this. You know, then I had the signature play that everybody remember against San Diego. You know, and I had my helmet ripped off and I still went and score. I, I felt that was my coming out. You know, like I finally arrived, you know, scored a touchdown in the NFL. It didn't count on the scoreboard, but in my heart, all I could see was the little eight-year-old in Dangerdale Park, you know, running around with those little cowboy with the star on his helmet, you know, going into the end zone and it was a Surreal moment, you know, a moment that I'll never forget in my life. You no know, matter if I play 10 years from now or the Cowboys call me tomorrow and say I'm done, you know, that, that moment there was so surreal because of all I went through. People talk about stats, people talk about championships, people talk about all these things that they want to achieve on the football field. It could be football, but it could not be. How do you want Philip Tanner to be remembered? If you had a legacy that was read out in an obituary or something, how do you want people to say, that's how I remember that? A guy that found a way, you know, a guy that made a way out of no way, you know, not so much as he had 2,000 yard seasons or all these numbers and these stats, but a guy that I could depend on, you know, a man that I could go and talk to about whatever, a man that cared, a man that wanted to help people. That's me. I want to help. You know, I talk to, come back to my high school all the time, and it's just so excited how. I just come in and just walk through the hallway. I don't need a camera crew, you know, I don't need the media. I just come in and I talk to people because it feels good for me if I could impact a kid's life. Now, going forward, what's the plan? What's the mindset? What are the goals? What is your outlook? Um, I look right now I'm one of my third in the NFL, you know, which is a, a huge year for me. You know, so I plan to this to be my most productive all season. You know, I plan to make all the sacrifices I need to make in order to perfect my craft. Going into my third year, you know, and like I said, only God knows who's ahead of me, but you know, I can prepare. You know, I can prepare myself. If they say place where I work is dead. You know, so I just plan to continue to prepare to the best of my ability and give it all I got. You know, go out and have the best third year, the best year of my life in the NFL. But starting just with the offseason, you know, resting up, perfecting my craft, and becoming a better Doing it well in the silver and blue. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate your time and your story in itself is a community service because others are going to see it and hear it and say, hey, I can do it too. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, well, all right. He's our head coach, athletic director. Hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm Hi. Carlton Nelson. Erica Bennett. Erica, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet All you. All right, good, good. How's everything going? Going good. That's good. Going good. Yeah. Getting back to some of the things this semester. Yeah, yeah. I seen uh, Grains when I was in the hallway, talking yeah. to him for a little bit. 
Yeah, we went down to San Antonio and he played in the All-America Bowl. Yeah, how you do? He did good. That's good. That's good. They, they treated him well down there all last week. That's good. That's so, he did a good job playing in the game. So. Well, uh, how did he look to Gibson? Look good. He, uh, he committed to uh, New Mexico. Okay, yeah, we, so he's going to ask him the same place. Uh, Behind? Behind. No, they're going to New Mexico State. New Mexico State, okay. okay. Yeah, him and Moorhead going to New Mexico State. Yeah, yeah. And he's going to New Mexico. I think Moorhead.